Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alexander Arefiev. I am press attaché of the Russian Embassy in South Africa, and this is the Alternative Viewpoint video series. Nowadays, against the background of the ongoing special military operation in Ukraine, as well as Western anti-Russian sanctions, many people believe, and we would agree with them, that the world has entered the era of changes. The world order, which existed since the collapse of the Soviet Union, is gradually finding itself in the rearview mirror, giving space to something new. We would like to contribute to that discussion by saying this. We live not just in the age of change, but also in the age of revelations. As the West has finally decided to throw off its mask and show us its real twisted face. See for yourself. Rampant anti-Russian hysteria, which is being actively instigated in the West through the media, has shown us one simple yet unpleasant truth about the so-called Western democratic values. The truth is that those values simply do not exist at all. They are as solid and reliable as a square of paper in the thunderstorm because, if need be, they can be easily discarded as if they never existed. All these years, the West has been mentoring the entire world of necessity of supporting free media, freedom of expression, tolerance, human rights, social justice, democracy, rule of law, inviolability of private property, and celebration of diversity. However, the collective West gave us a brilliant demonstration that in reality it cared of only one of its own exclusive self-assumed rights. The right of doing whatever it wants with zero regard to concerns and interests of others. Allow us to give you some illustrations to the point we're making. First, the fable of free media and freedom of expression has reached its unhappy end. The ban of Russian media outlets RT and Sputnik in the West is nothing else but a pure act of censorship. The West just labeled it as Russian propaganda and cut RT and Sputnik off. Apparently, everything that is not consistent with the convenient mainstream Western narrative can be labeled as such and prohibited from being accessible to public. Okay, one might argue that Russia should have seen that coming. Blocking off its media came as retaliation after Russia launched military operation in Ukraine. But there is one thing we should mention. The Russian media had been under constant pressure long before the operation started. For example, in Baltic states, Russian TV channels have been taken off air and Russian journalists constantly discriminated and threatened. UK blocked RT's banking accounts. RT Deutsch, the German division, has been taken off air in only six days after it started broadcasting. So much for freedom of speech and pluralism of opinions. And now if you thought that Russian media, officials and state entities were the only targets of the Western xenophobia onslaught, then you are wrong. Even common Russians, people of Russian origin, and even emigres who do not hold Russian passports anymore are now under attack. Western media, to give them credit, acknowledge this. According to Deutsche Welle, German police report hundreds of anti-Russian attacks. Anti-Russian hate in Europe is making chefs and school children out to be enemies, the Washington Post says. Russians across Europe face discrimination, hostilities due to war in Ukraine, reports Turkish Anadolu agency. Russian restaurants in US face harassment over Ukraine war, according to CBS. This process has already fell down to total absurd. Not just Russian brands, but also the brands that look, seem or sound like Russian are too getting under fire of blind public rage. The media now will find themselves explaining to people which brands actually belong to Russia. This is ridiculous. 
But perhaps the most infuriating example of the sever all ties with Russia hysteria is this. According to Medscape website, oncology groups that support Ukraine, one of them cut ties with Russian doctors. Appalling. Treatment of cancer and foreign politics are not related to each other, yet doctors from cancer organizations decided to break their Hippocratic oath for the sake of not falling off the mainstream and remain trendy with these anti-Russian steps. We hope that the cancer organization that broke ties with Russian colleagues is very happy with its important contribution to peace. Maybe this step took away the opportunity to save innocent lives, but those are just Russian lives, who cares? Especially when you need to make an important statement and contribute to fight against the aggressor, right? Let's delve into this thought for a while. In that sense, Ukrainians, whose military torture and kill Russian prisoners of war, are indeed Europeans, as they have been insisting for quite some time. Because Ukraine is part of the West in this sense. These are the values of xenophobia that Ukraine and EU share as soulmates and kindred hearts. Isn't that the reason why NATO defends democratic Ukraine? Here's the catch. All this does not contribute to anything good. Drunk on the sense of self-righteousness, the Western elites plunge into hatred and cynicism and drag their peoples into the same quagmire. While the Western mainstream media and politicians are trying to convince their peoples that they're doing the right thing, they conveniently forget that they have been keeping silence on atrocities and crimes that had been committed by the Kyiv regime in Donbass for eight years. It was okay for the Western elites to turn a blind eye on the genocide of people of Donbass and lie to their peoples by telling them that Ukraine has become a true democracy. Now they made themselves look as champions of humanism. Only now, when it became politically beneficial and useful in their confrontation with Russia. So much for tolerance, social justice, and human rights. As a standalone track of demonizing and assaulting Russians in Europe, there is so-called fight against Russian oligarchs. Let's stop here for a second. Who gave the British government the right to simply take away private property? Sanctions? Unilateral sanctions are illegal in the first place. There was no investigation and no court decision that would have formed basis for these actions. Russian citizens and or people of Russian origin are being simply robbed of their private property. It's called pillage. All the while, the UK tries to justify its actions with the so-called fight against corruption and illicit enrichment. Note that it's uniquely Russian oligarchs that have been fought against. Oligarchs from other countries who stay in London are doing just fine. Rule of law, they say? Inviolability of private property? Yeah, right. In one of its articles, the Guardian newspaper describes all this madness and, in fact, indulged lawlessness and crimes against Russians solely on the basis of their ethnicity as follows. Ordinary people around the world are finding their own ways to resist Russian aggression. A fancy way of saying people around the world are allowed to find their own ways to spread Russophobia. Dear Guardian, what is happening now is nothing but cynical manipulation of people's emotions for the purposes of achieving certain filthy political goals and an attempt to turn people into an angry mob that commits crimes without even understanding it. It is a method of sowing hatred towards Russians regardless of their individual position on conflict in Ukraine. This is pure racism and discrimination. Nothing more and nothing less. As if all the aforesaid wasn't enough, the West apparently decided to cancel everything Russian. Take a look at these headlines. How do you like them? Apparently, even Russian cats now pose a threat. Was there any joint statement by Russian cats in support of special military operation? We don't recall one. Yet that didn't prevent the West from imposing sanctions against cats simply because the animals were bred in Russia. 
This is beyond common sense. This is mass paranoia. In an attempt to cancel everything Russian, the West gradually comes to canceling the Latin alphabet. We're speaking about gradual ban of letters C and V as they became the symbols of support of Russia's actions. For example, Latvian parliament bans Russian military symbols Z and V. Zurich Insurance Company removes Z symbol from its logo. Letters now pose a threat. Amazing! Have a look at this. How about banning the entire alphabet now? By the way, we think that this Z and V ban is far from being consistent. Because if we follow this logic to its conclusion, then the Ukrainian president Vladimir Zelensky should be dubbed as Vladimir Yelensky. What we would like to point out in conclusion is that it took the West less than a month to stop even pretending that it adhered to its so-called democratic values that it touted for decades. It turned out that the West was merely using these values to promote its own interests without truly believing in them. Now, if you are thinking over the idea that Russia created some sort of extraordinary circumstances and that the rights of its citizens, their dignity and their security can be violated as an exception, they would like to propose to you to look at the situation from a different viewpoint. Firstly, there can be no exceptions in this regard. Impunity brings impunity. Hatred only brings hatred. And hating a certain nation or ethnicity cannot be trendy or righteous. It is not a way of resisting Russian aggression. It is a first and a very confident step towards Nazism and xenophobia. The West deliberately tries to manipulate people's emotions and exploit their natural desire for peace to open the Pandora box. There will be no way back should we open it. More violence and hatred will be our only destiny before we even know it. Secondly, the West allowed itself to make such exceptions in the past when NATO destroyed Yugoslavia and Libya, when US invaded Vietnam or Iraq, when the collective West ignored the tragedy of Donbass, as if the people who lived in all these countries and regions had no rights, no freedoms or dignity. Now, don't get us wrong. We're not saying that free media, freedom of expression, tolerance, human rights, social justice, democracy or rule of law are bad or obsolete. Nothing of the kind. These are good, valuable things. We're only saying that it turned out, obviously, that for West, it was nothing more than just a facade, a mask. And now the West removed that mask and showed us its real twisted face. An important question arises. How do the Europeans and the collective West as a whole are planning to get out of this? To get back to normal, so to say, after inflicting so much damage to relations with Russia. Are they planning to get out of this at all? There is a ground for reasonable doubt because as of now, they act like there is no tomorrow, as if there will be no Russia to deal with later. Maybe it is this delusion that fuels the West's sense of superiority and impunity. Who knows? That is all we have for today. My name is Alexander Arefyev, I am press attaché of the Russian Embassy in South Africa, and this is the Alternative Viewpoint video series. Stay tuned, stay safe.